Hello viewers, my name is Dr. Ajay, Associate Professor, Department of ECE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering College, Hyderabad. So today's topic is uh, definitions and terminology on very high frequency, ultra high frequency and microwave antennas. One, uh, these uh, definitions belong to the course antennas, VHS and propagation. So let us uh, start our session. The topic is VHF and UHF and microwave antennas. Let us see some basic antennas uh, of module 2 here of the course antennas, waves, and propagation. Here. Let us see the first basic antenna that is the very high frequency antenna, which is known as a Yagi Yuda antenna. Here in the Yagi Yuda antenna, we are having the three basic elements one is the, uh, the driven element, and uh, here there is one director here, and here, these are no, here there is a reflector here. And this is known as the director, and this is known as the driven element. So, in a basic uh, design of Yagi antenna, the reflectors on the directors are known as parasitic elements. Are known as the parasitic elements. So, so, this reflector is a parasitic element, and this director is also known as the parasitic element. So, what actually a parasitic element means? So, which depends upon other speed. So, a parasitic element is one which will not get energy directly. It gets uh, electromagnetic energy in an indirect way. So, a parasitic element is an element which depends on others' feed. So, it does not have its own feed. So, there is no feeding or excitation or direct uh, contact or any signal given directly to the element. Hence, in this type of others, we employ such elements which help in increasing the radiation indirectly. So, we are going to apply the electromagnetic energy for all the elements, not directly but in indirect way. Hence, the name is given as uh, parasitic elements. So, these parasitic elements are not directly connected to the feed here. So, if there are n number of antennas arranged in a one regular fashion, we call it as an array. So, why an actually an array is used to increase the directivity of the antenna? So, if there is a one antenna, the distance of propagation is very less, and we want to increase the uh, increase the distance of propagation. We need to increase the length of the antenna, which is practically impossible, which is practically impossible. Hence, we are going to uh, design an antenna by keeping more number of antennas adjacent, adjacent to the antennas. Hence, the name is given as other. If n number of antennas or n number of elements are arranged uh, parallel to each other, then we call it as an array. So, the arrays are used in the frequencies range from 2 megahertz to several gigahertz, from 2 megahertz to several gigahertz. So, these are especially used to get high directivity and also better forward gain with the unidirection. So, high directivity can be achieved. We can also transfer the uh, radiation pattern in a unidirectional or we can also transfer, transmit a unidirectional pattern or a narrow uh, beam width can be achieved by means of an, uh, this type of arrays. So, more parasitic elements means more gain. So, more number of elements. Element means antenna here. So, antenna is also known as an element. So, the more number of elements, it means that more gain can be achieved. So, the most common example of this type of array, it is the Yagi Yuda antenna. It is known as the, the Yagi Yuda antenna here. So, Yagi Yuda antennas are high gain antennas, and uh, these are uh, invented by a Japanese uh, professor uh, by the name Professor Yuda in the year 1940s. So, we know that a basic IQ is of three elements. One is the given element, the other one is the reflector, and one or more directors can be. So, basically, uh, this professor, Japanese professor, Uda, he designed an antenna by taking only three elements. One is the driven element, the other one is the reflector, the other one is the director here. So, there will be only one reflector for the IQ antenna, and you can place any number of directors adjacent to the uh, main director. To increase the directivity. So, the maximum number of directors is 40. The limitation of the maximum number of directors is <coughs> 40 to increase the directivity. Here, the driven element. So, this is known as the driven element, which is taken as a resonant half wave dipole made of a metallic rod. So, the driven element it is a resonant half wave dipole made of a metallic rod here. So, the three basic elements are uh, reflector and the driven element which is known as the active element here and director. 
these directors and filters are known as parasitic elements, and the main dipolar element we call it as an active element. This is also generally referred to as a beam antenna. The aguda antenna it, uh, uh, produces a unidirectional beam of moderate directivity uh, with the light weight and the low cost and simplicity in the design here. So the bandwidth can be increased between 2% when the spacing between the elements ranges from 0.1 lambda to 0.15 lambda. So here the spacing length can be varied here. This is the by varying the spacing between the elements from 0.01 lambda to 0.15 lambda. We can change the bandwidth range at least 2%. We can change the bandwidth range at least 2%. It provides a gain of 8 dB and a front to back ratio of 20 dB. So here it provides a gain of 8 dB, maximum gain of 8 dB and a front to back ratio of 20 dB here. A Yagi is also known as super directive and you know why? Because the directive key, the directivity is unidirectional and directivity can be increased by increasing the number of elements. Hence the name is given as super directive and you know, or a super gain arena since the system results a high gain. If director, greater directivity is to be obtained, then more directors have to be used. So more directors, then more directivity. Up to 40 elements we can use for increasing the directivity of the Yagi antenna. So arrays can be stacked to increase the directivity. So we can uh, we can place all the elements of an antenna adjacent to each other or one over the other. Since the name is given as stacked. So we can also place the elements adjacent to each other. So we can also design an antenna by placing one over the other, stacked over the other to increase the directivity. So AI is essentially a fixed frequency device. Frequency sensitivity and bandwidth is about 3% is achievable here. The next antenna is a folded dipole antenna. So the folded dipole antenna basically it consists of a basic dipole uh, but with a added conductor connecting the two ends of the uh, dipole. So this makes a loop of a wire that is short circuit to the DC. So as the, at the ends appear to be folded back, the antenna is known as a folded dipole antenna here. So the folded dipole con contains a basic dipole antenna. So here there is a, a basic dipole antenna and another dipole antenna we are going to take and these antennas are both are combined here at two ends here. Hence the name is given as a folded dipole antenna. Folded dipole antenna. So this makes a loop of by this is a short circuit to the DC. So as the end appears to be folded back the antenna is called as a folded dipole antenna here. So like the basic dipole, the polar dipole antenna is balanced antenna and needs to be fed with a balanced feeder. So here the folded dipole antenna, we are going to give the input supply by means of there will be a transmission line here. So this line we call it as a balanced transmission line where the current is supplied in both the conductors and the radiation is happening in this element also in this element in both the directions. So this is known as a balanced feeder transmission line. See, the additional part of the folded dipole antenna is often made by using a wire or a rod here. So the right term balanced uh, line means same amount of current flows in each wire with reference to the ground here. Same amount of current flows in the each wire with reference to the ground. Or the direction of current in one wire is 180 degrees out of phase with the current in the other wire. So in balanced line, none of the wires are connected to the ground. None of the wires are connected to the ground. Hence the name is given in balanced line. In two wires, the supply will be there. In balanced line, in the two wires, the supply will be given. The current, the same amount of current flows in each wire. Uh, and uh, those wires, any wire is not connected to the ground for the balancer feeder. Here, the main advantage of the one of the folded dipole antenna is the basic dipole antenna in impedance is 73 ohms. Uh, we can increase the impedance of the dipole antenna to four times uh, by attaching more number of dipoles to the existing dipole. So, when we attach one dipole antenna to the existing dipole antenna, the impedance can be increased from 73 ohms to 300 ohms. So, here there is a dipole antenna here. So, for this, the relation resistance is 73. When we connect another dipole antenna for this, the relation resistance increases to 300 ohms. 
radiation resistance increases to 300 ohms. So this is one of the basic advantage of uh, the fold led dipole antenna. The next one is a helical antenna. The next one is the helical antenna. So it is basically a simple the broadband, uh, very high frequency and ultra high frequency antenna, which provides a circular polarization. So which provides circular polarization here. So it basically contains an inner conductor and outer conductor. And here uh, it has many number of turns here. So as increase the number of terms, uh, the <coughs> so directivity can be increased here. Uh, circularly polarized waves are produced by the helical antenna here and here this is known as the axial length here a is equal to ns and s represents the spacing between the turns so whenever we are going to design a helical antenna uh, we need to uh, design in such a way that uh, circularly polarized waves are produced by the helical antenna at the far end of the or the, at the end of the helical antenna and also, if you want to increase the directivity of the helical antenna, it depends upon the number of turns and also the spacing between the turns. And also the spacing between the turns here. So, helical antenna is an example of a wire antenna. Itself forms the shape of a helix here. It is made up of by conducting material known as helix here. So, the helical antenna is the antenna in which conducting wire is wound in a helical shape and connected to the ground plate with the feeder line and connected to the ground plate with a feeder line. So it is the simplest antenna which provides circularly polarized waves. It is the simplest antenna which provides circularly polarized waves. So it is used for satellite communication. Uh, here the basic structure of the helical antenna, it contains a helix of thick copper wire, a tubing wound in the shape of a screw through, used as an antenna in conjunction with a flat plate metal corner ground plate. So one end of the helix is connected to the center, uh, connector of the cable and the outer connector is connected to the ground plate here. So whenever we are going to design an antenna, uh, so these are the basic parameters which are required for the design of antenna. One is the pitch angle, that is the angle between uh, the uh, different diameter of the helix and the turn spacing, we call it a pitch angle. So the ratio of the helical antenna depends upon the diameter of the helix, the turn spacing. Uh, we indicate it by the symbol known as pitch angle alpha. Alpha is the angle between a line tangent to the helix wire and a plane normal to the helical axis. So D is the diameter of the helix. So according to the diagram, we can write alpha is equal to inverse of S by pi D. And we can also write L is equal to root of S square plus C square. So these are the design equations of the helical antenna. So generally, <coughs> the helical antenna operates in two modes. One is normal mode and the axial mode. So the normal mode is also known as perpendicular mode of radiation. The other one is the axial mode of radiation, which is known as the in fire radiation or beam mode of uh, uh, radiation. So when uh, NL is far less than lambda, the antenna is said to be operating in the normal mode of operation. So when N, L, N means number of turns, L means the length of the array, it is far less than lambda, then the antenna is said to be operated in normal mode. In normal mode, the radiation pattern will be bidirectional. In normal mode, the radiation pattern of helical antenna will be bidirectional. And here diffraction of the edges of the wavegate results in the poor, uh, sorry. And in axial mode, the radiation pattern will be unidirectional. In uh, uh, axial mode, the radiation pattern will be unidirectional here. Now let us come to the next antenna, that is the horn antenna. So the horn antenna depends upon uh, the waveguide, uh, the concept of waveguide. So waveguide, it is a hollow conducting tube that allows energy to get radiated in space when excited at one end and opened at the other end. So waveguide is a hollow tube that allows energy to get radiated in space when excited at one end and opened at the other end here. So the amount of energy radiated by a waveguide is comparatively greater than the true wire transmission line. So we are having the different types of uh, devices to radiate electromagnetic energy. So a single conductor radiates electromagnetic energy, a two wires also radiates electromagnetic energy. And a hollow structure, a hollow structure which is known as a waveguide, it's a hollow tube, it gets energy gets radiated. A coaxial cable, this is also one type of transmission line which radiates electromagnetic energy. 
or there is optical fiber cable this is also used as a transmission lens so these are the different types of uh, uh, transmission lens we are having to radiate uh, electromagnetic energy so there is no central conductor present in the waveguide so there will be no present no any wires present in the waveguide and can be used either as a rectangular or a cylindrical shape so this is a rectangular waveguide and we can also use cylindrical waveguide we can also use the cylindrical waveguide here it allows the propagation of electromagnetic from one end to the other so one end we are going to give the excitation here at one end will be open here so here is the waveguide in this waveguide here at one end we are going to give the excitation and the other, other end the electromagnetic energy is being radiated so it allows propagation of electromagnetic waves from one end to the other end so due to the open end there exists poor impedance matching between the waveguide and the free space so here we can see here so this is the open end here this is the uh, excitation at one end and here there is open here the electromagnetic energy will be distributing uh, in different directions hence there will be the poor impedance matching between the waveguide and the free space and the free space so diffraction at the edges of the waveguide results in poor radiating ability of the waveguide and so the radiation pattern is a non directive nature so the radiation pattern is going to distribute its energy in different directions in the free space so the radiation pattern is a non directive so the radiation pattern is non directive in nature so to improve the radiation efficiency in the directivity <coughs> of the beam the wave guide should be provided with an external aperture to make the abrupt discontinuity of the wave into a gradual transformation it means that so all the electromagnetic energy radiated in free space it is a non directive nature so we need to direct all the electromagnetic energy in one particular direction so to transform all the energy we are going to attach a horn to the existing wave guide so this is known as horn which attached attach to the wave guide hence the name is given as the horn antenna so the electromagnetic energy that is radiating out from the wave guide we call it as by the word flaring so all the energy in the forward direction gets radiated so this can be termed as flaring so the flared portion can be square uh, rectangular or conical so we can design an antenna not only it is a rectangle so we can also design circular we can also design circular uh, rectangular it may be square so here you can see here so this can be rectangular this can be square and this can also be uh, circular or conical so most popular antenna uh, way the horn antenna is used is in dish antenna either in dish antenna or tortoise sky antenna uh, we are going to use this horn antenna as the primary antenna which radiates electromagnetic energy towards the secondary antenna so if the horn is too small or the wavelength is too large then the antenna will not work efficiently so horn antennas are commonly used as an active element in the dish antenna so in dish antenna there are two types of elements one is the active uh, antenna the other one is the second antenna secondary antenna so the active antennas we take horn antenna as best example for most of the dish antennas and the uh, tata sky antennas or parabolic filter antennas or many extreme high frequency antennas so these operate under ultra high and super high frequencies which range between 300 megahertz to 30 gigahertz so the frequency range of these horn antennas is it is approximately 300 megahertz to 30 gigahertz here there are different types of horn antennas one is the sectoral horn antenna this type of horn antenna flares out only in one direction so flaring in the direction of electric vector produces the sectoral e plane horn so here there are two types of uh, horn antennas we can design one is sectoral horn so this type of horn antenna flares out in only one direction if the flaring is happening only in the e direction then we call it as an e plane sectoral horn if the flaring is happening in the direction of only h plane then we call it as h plane sectoral horn we call it as an h plane sectoral horn so this type of horn antenna flares out only in one direction so in only one direction we are going to to flare out to produce electromagnetic energy either in the e direction or h direction we are going to modify the region of the antenna hence the name is given as a sectoral horn antenna so this type of horn antenna flares out only in one direction so flaring in the direction of electric field electric vector produces the sectoral e plane horn similarly 
playing the direction of Dandy Vita produces the sectoral H plane horn here. The other one is a pyramidal horn antenna. So, this type of horn antenna produces uh, electromagnetic energy in both the directions of E and H. Hence, the name is given as a pyramidal horn. So, this has flaring in both sides, either it may be E direction or H, H walls. The flaring is done on both the E and H walls of the rectangular waveguide. So, then pyramidal horn antenna is produced here. So, the pyramidal horn antenna, we are going to design an antenna in such a way that where electric and magnetic fields are uh, in both the sides, in both the sides here. Now, what is uh, flaring and again? So, let us see what, uh, what happens when the flaring angle is increased, what happens when the flaring angle of the horn antenna is decreased. So, the angle of the flare on the horn antenna has a marked effect on the gain and beam width. So, when we increase the flaring angle, the beam width and the gain, there is an impact on the gain and the beam width. So, the gain of the horn antenna will vary with frequency and also the angle of the flare of the horn itself. So, without delving deep into the horn antenna theory, it can be imagined that there is an optimum flare angle. There is an optimum flare angle. So, here if the, if the flare angle, that means this is known as the flare angle, if the flare angle is more, then the energy is radiated in different directions. Uh, we get a broad bandwidth here. The, ba the <coughs> beam width will be very wide here. So, wide amount of radiation pattern is assumed. We get it. <coughs> and if this flaring angle is reduced, then we get a narrow beam width. Then we get a narrow beam width or unidirectional uh, beam width like pencil beam can be achieved when alpha is reduced here. So, this theory shows that there are two areas where the impedance changes abruptly. One is at the mouth of the horn antenna and the way the sides begin to flare outwards. So, the impedance changes at the mouth of the antenna here. This is the waveguide. So, this is the mouth here. Here, the impedance transformation takes place. Impedance transformation takes place when it comes out of the waveguide. So, it is possible to gain an understanding of the operation of the horn by looking at two extremes where the angle of flare is at 0 degrees and 90 degrees and the case between the two extremes. So, this is about the horn antenna. So, <coughs> these are the different types of horn antenna. One is sectoral horn antenna, other one is the pyramidal horn antenna. So, these are known as the VHF, VHF antenna. So, so we have discussed about the Yagi antenna, the helical antenna, the folded dipole antenna and also the horn antenna. So, all these antennas comes under the category of VHF antennas. That is very high frequency and in So, for all these uh, <coughs> antennas, you can refer to the textbook uh, John D. Cross, Ronald J. Marfeka, Ahmad S. Khan, Antennas Wave Propagation, 4th edition 2010. Also, you can refer Antennas Wave Propagation by E. A. Bakshi. You can also refer uh, all these topics on K. Prasad, Antennas and Wave Propagation, 2001 publication. So, let us close our session today. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.